Hello, and welcome to Stand Up World, the first episode of a new weekly podcast. I hope you enjoy it. I know it's exactly what the world needs, another stand-up comedy podcast, but I'm here to deliver it to you, and what can I tell you? Uh, it's a great time in my life. I'm enjoying myself a lot. I've started doing stand-up again. I love it. I was uh, just in London. I was there at a very historic time to be there. They had a new prime minister when I was there, Liz Truss, who I really don't know anything about, so I can't say much about her. I just know by looking at her, she does not seem to be someone that could take a punch right to the face, which I personally think that's something that a world leader should be able to do is just get clocked right in the face hard. And I don't think she can. I, I think Margaret Thatcher could take a punch to the face. I mean, her face was just designed to just take five knuckles square on hard. Oh, dear. That was a, quite a punch. Good on you. That was wonderfully done. Bravo. You do know now, though, you are fucked, right? You're good and fucked. I'm sorry, but just fucked. Trump, whatever you say about Trump, Trump could take a punch to the face. He would just get walloped in the face. He would land on his ass. He would cry for a little bit, and then he'd get up, and he would instantly start lying about it. I've just taken an amazing punch to the face, probably the hardest anyone's ever been hit in the face ever. People that were there said it looked like a missile hit me in the face. They were blown away. People are still talking about it. They said it's a historical punch I took. A projectile just hit me in the face and I didn't even flinch. I want history to record this day, the day that Donald J. Trump, president, took a torpedo to the face. Okay, by the way, I don't, I'm not an impressionist, so sorry. But the queen died, which made me really sad because I really love the queen. I'm, I'm an Anglophile. I've spent so much of my life over there in London, and I just thought the world of her. And it was a really kind of a sad time to be there. Her pictures were on every bus stop and every wall. It was instantly. And I was playing the top secret comedy club and I actually asked them as an American if it would offend them if I made some jokes about it. And they said, go for it. I'm sorry about your queen. <laughs> Is it okay to make jokes about it as an American? Or... I mean, I don't want to make jokes. I don't want to be disrespectful. I just, I, I just think Charles, I feel bad for him. I mean, that's the weirdest kind of happy sad you can possibly be. <laughs> he just doesn't know whether to shit or go bowling tonight. <laughs> but he, I, I, I just saw in the news right before I came, he was the last one to see her, which is kind of cute, right? <laughs> he went in there. He said, Mommy, smell this pillow. <laughs> Smell it again, Mommy, harder. <laughs> it's time, Mommy. <laughs> time marches on, Mommy. But yeah, King Charles, actually, which sounds more like a dog than the King of England, but King Charles, really, he waited very patiently for his mother to die. You have to give him that. I don't think anybody ever had to wait as patiently to take power the closest we have to America is what poor Kamala Harris is going through right now. You know, she's just hoping upon hope that Joe Mentum stops to it in a dead halt. And he just goes down to the floor and they put her in to a job that she knows she would never be voted in and she'll probably be voted right out. And really, her only concession is that she knows being the first first lady president She'll get all kinds of tchotchkes and globes and coffee mugs, and I think she'll be happy with that. So, yeah, it's a good time for me. Like I say, I'll be up in San Jose this weekend. 
working with my buddy Jeff Ross and his cousin Ed Larson, a great guy, at the San Jose Improv, which is a beautiful club, just gorgeous. They, they turned a theater into the club. So if you got to come see Jeff Ross, see his show live. He, he's pretty amazing. He just killed at the O2, just destroyed. And he did this great queen bit he's done for a while now. It's just killed about the queen having sex with Prince Philip the last time and the dogs jump on the bed. It's just a classic. And I actually had a very friend of mine, a very famous British comic that saw them all at the O2 and couldn't believe how well Jeff's queen bit was received. This was before she died, even, you know, and I think... I think that bit is might be in the coffin with her, playing at state. But you never know. Maybe Jeff will rework it. Maybe you can put Kamala Harris in, do the jokes with Kamala Harris. I don't know. He's a he's a very capable guy. He'll figure it out. But go come see him live. He, he really puts on a great show, and he brings up a bunch of people from the audience to do a speed roast. That he's it's just it it's so much fun to watch. First, I go to Martha's Vineyard. I do one night at a new comedy club, Ken Burns' new comedy club, The Holocaust Haha. Ha. It's a beautiful little club. It seats 50 people. And you, sadly, you only get in if you're a political pawn. So if you are a political pawn, come see me on Martha's Vineyard. And then I go to the Irvine Improv, another just beautiful club. Great. And I'll be working with Damon Waynes, who is a genius. He really is. He's just, he's the best. And he's really working in rare air. He's up there with Rock and Chappelle and Burr and Ricky Gervais and all the best. And he's got a new hour and it, it's, he's so, he is so underrated. I have to tell you, if you live anywhere near the Irvine Improv, get over there and see Damon, see this new hour he's doing. And of course, so, some of you know, Damon and I made a classic movie together, Blank Man, which was just awarded, was enlisted in AFI's top 11,000 best films of all time. Admittedly, we are very low on the totem pole, but it's there. And finally, finally, there's the Sunday, October 2nd, in the main room of the Comedy Store, we're doing the Detroit Comedy Jam in L.A. with Tim Allen, Howie Mandel, Paul Rodriguez, Sandy Danto, and myself. And it's, uh, I don't know, many you know, in the 80s, I did a tour, a Comedy Jam tour through the Midwest, and we did an HBO special, Howie, uh, Paul Rodriguez, Dave Couillet, and myself. And this is kind of a reboot. So it's a great night. The show's at 7, Sunday, October 2nd. There's a Detroit-style Coney Dog dinner at 5, and it's going to be a great show. So that's it. That's the first episode. I don't know where this thing goes, but let's be honest, it can only get better. Stand Up World Podcast. Thanks for the support. I love you. God bless.